I would like to say that I'm really grateful for being able to take part in this conference. It was really inspiring for me and some of the presentations were really insightful for my own PhD. So thank you. I would like to thank the hosts and the organizing com <clears throat> committee for making it possible for us. So thank you. So moving on. Um, okay. As I said before, we're going to speak about Arvanitica. Arbanitic the term Arvanitica refers to the language spoken by the Arvanites in various parts of Greece. Cut off chronologically and geographically from the body of Albania, the language followed completely a course of its own, the main feature of which is the preservation of archaic elements and the strong influences from Greek. Uh, this dialect was achieved not by once, but with some waves going down from migrating from uh, what was, we say, modern Albania to back then Greece. Mm. The study of the peripheral Albanian dialects, Arvanitica and Arbres, offers predominantly valuable information on the Albanian language as a whole concerning its evolution through time. Such information is in short supply in the written testimonies since this date back only to the 15th century. To date, Unlike our press, there is no complete explanatory dictionary that includes all the Arvanitica varieties of Greece. Our aim is to fill this gap with the composition of a dictionary of the Arvanitica dialects, which began as a master's thesis under the guidance of Professor Dori Kiriazi and is still in progress during my PhD. So, uh, the completion of the work will also allow access to this rich linguistic material to Albanian speech researchers, as some previous representations of the varieties have utilized Greek orthography. In this paper, we introduce the issues we faced up to now during the composition of the Arvanitica Greek Dictionary, presenting some of the matters that have arisen while we were processing the glossaries and the text from various Arvanitica speaking regions. And also, we will share a sample of our work up to now. Mm, the prerequisite for the complete undertaking of the research is to include the linguistic material from all the available sources. The main sources that we are using to abstract data from are in chronological order. A. Noctes Pelasgike of Reinhold. Uh, this is a short grammar accompanied by some texts of the Arvanitic of the island region of Greece. Uh, second one is Ienatiki and Malvaniki dialectos, uh, being translated as the Greek Albanian dialect in Attica is from Furikis. Uh, this studies are not Albanitica of Athens. Uh, the third one is Petrus Furikis, Osalaminios Archaeologos, Historicos Laographos Glossologos. Uh, this book was published recently, 2017, and it brings to light a great number of Albanitica texts, including tales, songs, folklore, medical treats, and many unpublished studies. D is Albanitica, the Albanian Sprach in Griechenland of Sazen. Uh, Sazen had inspired an optimistic plan, but failed to sum through with it. Uh, he publishes the first volume in 1991 with a rather informative and thorough introduction. Then a detailed and multi-level description of the Southeastern South Attic Boeotian idiom was given. Of the three volumes that were never published, the second one would refer to the rest of the Albanian idioms. The third would be a social linguistic analysis, while the fourth would take the form of a dictionary of the Albanian idioms. Uh, fifth one that we will we, we'll include is, uh, and particularly important, is a contribution of Johalas with his monographs, the publication of the Greek Albanian Dictionary by Kupitoris, the lexicon of Albanian I'm not going to say the Greek one. It's a two-volume work uh, entitled Hydra Forgotten Language. Another of his works worth mentioning is Andros, Arvanites and Arvanitica, Evia, the Arvanitica, Arvanitica and Moria as well as the Albanian speaking village of Thras. It is pretty recently published. It was in 2019. It has a glossary. It has a lot of uh, information about the, uh, the community there, how they are reached, and uh, a lot of texts. The, the Petros Furikis, Salaminos Archaeologos, Andelecta. I think that, yeah, I th I've done it. I've placed it twice. This one is a mistake of mine. And then, uh, so. I'm going to speak now about the issues in composing the Arvanitica Greek Dictionary. A necessary condition for the composition of the complete explanatory dictionary that includes all the Arvanitica varieties of Greece was the compilation of the reverse dictionary of Hydra. 
This pro process was very demanding in terms of time, which started in 2015, 17 during my master, but also in terms of organizing the material and deciding the criteria to take into account for creating these lemmas. Uh, <clears throat> but before I speak about uh, this dictionary, I find it uh, important to, to say a little, some words about who is Kupitoris and uh, what is this dictionary of the island of Hydra. Panayot Kupitoris, who comes from Hydra, was an Albanic scholar with a peculiar education. The Albanian speakers of Greece were an important circle who tried to contribute to the Albanian language as did the Albanian speakers of Italy. Their goal was a common language and a common alphabet that would be understood by the Albanians of the time from all sides. Uh, this is the Hydra island, as you can see, is uh, opposite of Athens. You cannot go there, but it's really close to Peloponnese as well, but you cannot go, uh, but there's no port that takes you to Hydra. The only way is to go from Athens there, and it's like more or less one hour, it's really close. So the title of the dictionary uh, is, as I say, and it says, um, he, he includes not only the material from the dialect, Atlantic dialect of Hydra, he, he tries to incorporate some of Toskic, Gegic, and some of Arbres dialects that he finds from various texts at the, his time. Uh, the reasons that made him compose this dictionary are unknown, but he says his goal. We can see him, we can find him writing, Translating, I hope that literate people, when they see our work, will understand that our language, Albanian, is not the most inferior of all that is spoken. At this point, we consider necessary to clarify the term reverse dictionary. Despite the term dictionary, Kupitori's dictionary, had just two columns, and uh, it resembles more with a glossary than an actual dictionary. The first column included Greek words, and the second one, the rendering in Arvanitica, written in Greek characters. What we did was to give priority to the column of Arvanitica, so we actually reserved the columns. Uh, we placed first in Arvanitica, written now in Albanian letters, and then the Greek meanings. In other words, we turned from a Greek Arvanitica glossary to an Arvanitica Greek dictionary, organized into limas, enriched with the grammatical information for each lemma and with examples whenever it was possible. Inevitably, uh, when you reorganize uh, the material in such way, you have to face various problems in both Arvanitica and the Greek renderings. So I'm going to speak about some uh, key issues we have encountered so far and how we handle them. First of all, the problem is spelling. As expected, Arvanitica being a low variety, heteroglot language in Greece, shows writing variation and lack of standardization. We will focus on Kupitori's dictionary and his writing decisions both in alphabet and spelling. Ipso facto, when you undertake such a project, the first problem you are called upon to solve is the proper handling of the transcription of the Albanian words, as the Greek alphabet does not cover the whole range of Albanian phonemes. Uh, specifically, the difficulty lies in the rendering of the sounds k, b, d, j, n, sh, j, j, and uh, uh. In the beginning, Kupitoris had decided to use exclusively the Greek alphabet. In his dictionary, however, there are additions from the Latin alphabet, and this conversion can only be attributed first to the influence of Han and Kamarda, from whom he drew material for his dictionary, or B, there was a time, at that time, it was really important, the Pelagian theory. So his linguist beliefs had, as a result, some very peculiar spelling choices. More specifically, the choice E, written as Y, which is pronounced e in modern Greek, instead of E that it does exist already. We can see a word, for example, Kripsira here, which means the, um, the, something to be salty, you know, Kripsira. And you see that the first one, he writes it while it's the same phoneme, E, E, nothing changed, and it's not affected by the environment, what's before or after. He still, so we see that, He's, in the first, he uses the E, Yota, and then Y. But then we see that this kind of motif repeats itself. And we see him, Zyarmi, and Skelpsi, in modern Greek, Skelmues. So um, initially, we were concerned about it because we took into account the possibility that it corresponds to another phoneme. However, in the Pragmatia, the answer is given by Kupitoris himself. I am writing about Y 
because of the suffix of the abstract, geg nouns, sine, without postponed definite article, sina. Uh, yeah, it, it is the Greek suffix sine. There is this uh, suffix sine, it does exist, not the Greek too. The ones that have written before me, not spell correctly, sine with yota. The same applies for Y and Albanian masculine article, just like the well-known conversation conversion of O to E in the dialects of Thessaly and Lesbos. As you saw earlier, uh, it's, he, we see him use it as a definite article in the masculine. So um, this, of course, is a result of ideology. He would be believing in Pelasian theory. That's why he concluded writing this way. In addition, regarding to the orthography, the inconsistency of Kupitoris is obvious. Sometimes he writes based on how he thinks the word is etymologized, and other times having in mind the Greek orthography of the words. For example, we have the word Chrysokedimenos, uh, which one is that someone with, uh, with the gold, like, I don't know the, the English word for it, uh, someone help me. Uh, so called, uh, Edda, uh, when it's, uh, okay, never mind. Yeah, knitted, yeah, gold knitted, Chrysokedimenos. We see him uh, write this, it, instead of E, he has used Y. The reason is not phonetic, of course, it's just the etymology of how he understands uh, the word. This one example is crystal. It's crystal in English, crystallino, yalnes, crustavit, but this one is crystavit, crystallit. Uh, this double L, we will speak about it later. It's, believe me, the rock star of Hydra dialect. Uh, and Silogi, you see that, uh, Again, this happens. So, the, about the dialectical variety in the selection of the lemmas. Starting from Arvanitica, Kupitoris wanted to show the wealth and the capabilities of Albania. One of the fields that he could use to prove this wealth was the broad geographical varieties of Albanian. And uh, he writes, Albanian language is so much susceptible and rich in aspect of dialects and idioms. Uh, his dictionary includes, A, words from different uh, dialects of Albanian, for example, uh, in the Lema Kori, when it's written Kori, we see him write Vaisa, Bila, Kopilea, like three synonyms for one. It's a huge variety of what he incorporates to his uh, dictionary. Later on, we find the Lema Meliglotos, Glumyalt, uh, Glumhembel, Golembel, Golmyalt. In this occasion, we let them be as different lemmas so as to make the emerging linguistic wealth more obvious for the researchers that want to work on this. Uh, Dictionary. Uh, remember Melibus? Variety, yeah. This is how we did it. You can see that no matter the fact they are synonyms, they are placed one under each other. So this wealth is easily understood. Variety, um, excuse me. Um, wait. Yeah, and this one is an, another example of uh, Baskuar and Baskuan, dialectal variety basing on the suffix, or Baskim and Baskuarit. In both occasions, we use, use both of the types, giving priority to the suffix Uar and Dim, instead of Uam and Duarit. Um, let's read a rima from the reverse dictionary. For example, this, we have the lemma Baskoin, right? And you can see how many in the, in the Greek rendering, we have like, six synonyms, it's, it's huge. This one was, uh, when in the glossary of Kupitoris, all this wealth was, uh, it was not gathered. You had really tried to, to gather this. And why is, are there so many synonyms? The, example, the reason is that there are two, two levels of language. There is the demotic language spoken at that time, and also the um, Katharevusa language, the more archaic language. And you can see now that beginning from Bascoin, from the uh, from the verb, passive verb, and then Bascuar, Bascuam, Baskimi, Bascuar. It, it's it's a it's a family. It's a word family. It's it's actually, it's actually a lemma. Now you you have five minutes. Five yeah. minutes. And the, continuing, Bascuar, Bascuam. It's the same thing. It's the continue with. What we did was to give priority to the most common type of the Albanian standard language, choosing it as our main lemma, and not the dialectical type as a second one. The same rule applies for the next case. Um, vocal peculiarities of the dialect of Hydra. One of the issues was the duplication that appears regarding to the phonetic changes that occur in the Arvanitica of Hydra. I told you before about the double L. You can see here that uh, 
it becomes Avui. What do you do now? What do you prioritize? Do you prioritize the dialect of Hydra or do you use the what is today's standard uh, Albanian in order to be to we wanted to highlight this difference. So we begin with the standard Albanian and then in the in the row the next of the types. So yeah. Need, despite, and there is a need for, for codification. Despite the problem of how to transcript a non codified variety, when you decide to write in Albanitica, inevitably you have to face the problem of how to write it. More precisely, in Albanitica, we find the phoneme G. We choose GH for its de depiction. However, the choice was arbitrary. We couldn't, we couldn't help it. it. We just picked this. Uh, in, for example, Gastra and Gavast, meaning uh, blue, light blue. So I'm reading to some conclusions. In terms of quantitative data, at the moment, we have around 10,000 lemmas and 369 pages. We decided that the most efficient way to group these lemmas was by creating a group of words with a criterion of the root of the words. With this choice, we made sure that we will achieve the economy of space, but also we will bring to surface all of the wealth of our material. This database is being constantly enriched, enriched and for the moment, we can give an exact number of the lemmas by the end of the task. Uh, we described the difficulties of encounter we encountered during the composition of a non-coded dialectical dictionary and how we solved them based on scientific lexicographic criteria. One of these difficulties was the increased degree of multiple types in the geographical varieties and the extensive rep repeatability in the Albanitic Albanian field. And that's for the Greek part, the material comes from both vernacular and Catharebusa, loading to a vast number of synonyms. Um, we underlined the importance of the work for the Albanian speaking researchers, whom the structure of this dictionary did not facilitate the study. Since the base for our dictionary is a dictionary of scriptoris, we focus on this and specifically on the writing choices that he makes. We have shown that these choices are not random, but demonstrate Kupitori's attempt to prove that Arvanitica was equal to Greek and Latin, both in terms of historical course and in geographical and stylistic wealth. The importance of these choices is heightened by the historical context and the surrounding atmosphere of his days. So finally, the case of Kupitoris is a clear case of identity issues. Earlier, we said that the purpose of composing the dictionary is not clear, but certainly it was necessary for him. The format of the dictionary and his choices reflect its multiple identity and extensive knowledge of both languages. Inwardly, he wants to prove that he's a sufficient other for both nations. So thank you. Thank you.